Globally, the efforts to tackle poverty and inequality in human societies have always engaged the attention of leaders at different levels. Indeed, many organizations, like the United Nations, have been at the forefront of the fight to eradicate poverty by promoting inclusiveness and the principle of leaving no one behind. To address the many challenges posed by poverty, World leaders at a historic UN summit on January 1, 2016 adopted 17 Sustainable Development Goals SDGs with the aim of ending all forms of poverty by 2030. These goals include eradicating poverty in all its forms, ensuring healthy lives and well-being for all, ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education for all, ensuring availability of water for all, and ensuring access to affordable, reliable and modern energy for all, amongst others. Many UN member states made commitments to mobilize efforts over the next 15 years to achieve these goals in their respective countries. Among the member nations that made this pledge was Nigeria. With a population of over 200 million people, Nigeria is Africa's most populous nation. However, a significant number of Nigerians live below the poverty line. This is a challenge that successive governments have tried to address. After the January 2016 UN resolution, the federal government of Nigeria set up a special project unit under the Office of the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Works and Housing. The mandate is clear to oversee the implementation of key SDGs that had the potential of making a real difference in the lives of the poor and underserved communities across Nigeria. The communities are the drivers of the project because they are responsible for uh, I mean, bringing to the notice of either the department, the SPU, or the members of the National Assembly, Assembly representing them, their need. And also, again, we do conduct uh, sample surveys of what type of project they really want. So our projects, by their nature, directly affect the lives of the common man. Our projects are really cardinal to because they are already right deep into the remote areas of the communities. Of the 17 SDGs, the Special Project Unit of the Ministry of Works and Housing focused on eight, which cut across several sectors. The eight goals are Goal 1, No Poverty, Eradicating Poverty in All Its Forms. Goal 3, Ensure Healthy Lives and Promote Well-Being for All. Goal 4, Ensure Inclusive and Equitable Quality Education for All. Goal 6, Ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Goal 7. Ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable and modern energy for all. Goal 9. Build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. Goal 11. Make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. Goal 17, strengthen the means of implementing and revitalizing Global Partnership for Sustainable Development. As part of conscious efforts to measure impact, in February 2020, the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, SAN, directed that a media team be engaged to embark on a nationwide documentation of key projects carried out by the Special Project Unit across the six geopolitical zones. From the rehabilitation and reconstruction of schools, roads and healthcare centers, to the provision of clean and sustainable power and water supply amongst others, the team's mandate was to visit beneficiary communities and interact with local stakeholders in order to assess the impact of these projects at the grassroots. The media team started their tour by visiting key SBU projects in the southwest region of the country. Social infrastructure like schools, boreholes, and healthcare centers were inspected. And in communities like Ogoton in Ekiti State, where access to portable water had remained a recurring challenge, the indigents now happily attest to a change in their story. Today, a borehole has been sunk in the community, giving the people access to clean, portable water 24-7. Apart from the provision of a borehole, the community now boasts of a healthcare center that provides primary healthcare for men, women, and children in the community. 
tori la koko akoko erun bi ele ta ba to ba ni igba mi ti o ba si omi a ma nla ti gbe machine la la tun ma ko mi lona jiji ti o de si pe eyan ma bu lo mi bo se wu sugbon la koko yi eyan gan ma awon mi ma wa lati ni yan lo igboro jijo jiji na lati wa ma ko mi omi fine lati mu a ma fi fo oso a ma fi dana a ma fi gbogbo nkan to dara gbogbo wa la ma n gbadura fun won pe olorun a ma bu fun won won gbe generator fun wa ta ma n lo ike ti o ba si na wa ma lo generator ta ma n lo to je pe a ma fi pump omi won se fun wa ni won fi aye derun fun wa won wo bi won wo awon bi mekunu se ri won je ki ya je awon mekunu won ro mo gbadura fun won pe bo se gbogbo nkan to won ni la ni laye won olorun a ma se fun won ya yeah, so da bi bayi sile ko si awon ilewo so kokan ni to si ha ma lo bi to jina gan sugbon ni won gba ti a ti se bi bayi adupe lowo olorun o de wa dada ta ba wo gan ile mi to si bi lo wa o doju ko ilewo so bi ni so gba gan ti ba wa da bi sile o din ku irin ajo wa ti wa la wa deri pe o wa dada ka to bi mo gbe bi na ni mo ma wa gba ti won ti da bi sile o ba de ni eni compte ma ma wa bi fun abere aje sira awon mo wa and e even the gan bi bayi ni mo bi omo mi si ta ba fe bi mo bi bayi la ma wa lati gba yen a de ri pe aye pada dada ti ba ibe bayi adupe lowo ijoba wa fun ori ti won se fun wa from ekiti state the team visited several other communities and states in the southwest region including Oshun, Oyo, Ondo, and Lagos states, documenting other projects designed to address the selected SDGs, as well as meeting with local stakeholders. One key project that was identified which addressed SDG 4 was the Dogley Community Primary School located in Dogley Community, Badagri, Lagos state. In the past, children in this community would walk as far as 7 kilometers to other communities just to go to school. But thanks to the intervention of the special project units of the Ministry of Works and Housing, this narrative has changed. This school was founded uh, September. 9 2017 so i bless the name of the lord for god federal government to remember this community and i know that what they have started they will not stop until the community are able to acquire more of all what they need From the southwest region, the team headed to the southeast to inspect some of the projects executed in that region. Amongst the projects carried out by the special project unit in the southeast was the construction of roads in rural communities. As a result of these road construction interventions, many rural communities in the southeast have witnessed a tremendous improvement in the ease of movement of goods and persons. Earth roads have been tarred and other defective roads rehabilitated in different communities. So no za the mama won I are any sin many places I need to go to Oza, Mani Mobune, Mama and Kohabri Bukani de Rodeha. This road was not motorable before it was done last year. Since we are no longer uh, marching on more than the sand, uh, and the, uh, something we have never seen except the highway across, we are happy. We have been thanking them even when they were doing this road. We were even helping them one way or the other. The villagers were very, very happy, to be frank. In addition to rural road projects, boreholes have been sunk, schools renovated, and primary health care centers have been built in different communities across the southeast. Akogoli Umodioka community in Anambra state now has a primary health care center built. 
Agbale, a community in Enugu State, now has boreholes providing portable water. Ekpelo community in Ebonyi State has seen major renovation of their community school, amongst other interventions. And in Olu local government area of Imo State, a community town hall has been constructed where indigents can gather for meetings and different activities. This is the first time, as you are coming, this is the only federal presence in my community. I've been on the throne for 15 years, and this is the first time we're having a federal presence in my community. And we are very, very grateful to Honorable Alaboso. We want him to carry our greetings and our love and thanks to the head of the federal government, Mohamed Buhari, who has made it possible for him to get this allocation and put this structure for us. We are happy about it and we are grateful. From the southeast, the team moved to the south-south region to document some of the key projects executed by the special project unit. One of the communities visited was Akuruko community in River State, where a school was constructed in order to provide a conducive learning environment for the children. Prior to this intervention, the community did not have a functional school. For the moment, there's no school here apart from this one. All other school that the children are attending is from one other private church there. And it is a rent house that they used to put the children as a schoolroom. The government did very well of bringing school to this place which our children will learn. It's a very good achievement. Even we are praying to get more apart from the school. From River State, the team visited Bayelsa State, Akwaibom State, and Cross River States, documenting various projects and interacting with local stakeholders who have benefited immensely from the different intervention projects of the SPU. These projects included boreholes for portable water, construction of classroom blocks and primary healthcare center, the rehabilitation and construction of roads, and the installation of transformers to provide electricity. Godwin, a small store owner in Nafaha Ofyong community, Akwaibom State, narrates how improved power supply has positively impacted his business and the community at large. I came here one million, eighty eighty. I came here maaba, me singa ni yambo, anya phone jemi, nung tembe ne. But I came here me ba, singa nang tembe ne, me singa ni yong. Nepal na me eighty eighty, kem ba sing dong ke fish. Ah dong, le dong ba wa dong ne, man, ugo ntro, ye pure water. So Nepal one me eighty eighty, you know. I mean do a more big and success because business and number. After visiting four states and several communities in the South South region, the team traveled up north to Jigawa State in the northwestern region. Their first stop was at the Sule Lamido University in Jigawa State, where the special projects unit had executed a major water project. Dr. Mohamed Ajimi, who is head of the Department of Science in the university, recalls how water scarcity used to be a major problem for the institution. When we got to the quarters, there was no source of water. The only source of water were taps in the main campus. We have to use heavy jerry cans. We used to fresh water from buckets and jerry cans to store and use. It was quite hectic and uh, very humane. Today, Thanks to the intervention of the SPU, a borehole project comprising of four components, an elevated tank with a capacity of 130,000 litres, a water reservoir with a capacity of 260,000 litres, a mini treatment plant which has a pressure cylinder and an inter-filter high lift pump have all been installed in the university. Before, between 2017, for my stay in the university, to 2019, I can say, we had a little bit problem with water issues. Students need to go deep inside the university compound to find at least little suitable water than the one they are using in their hostels and within the school premises in some extent. So we had a little problem of water. I cannot even say a little, we had problem of water. Though the university community, the university management, tried their best to see that they stabilize and provide enough water supply in the university. 
but at least we do have problems before. But for this uh, project, you know, this gigantic project we have of this water supply in the university, it's helped a lot. The coming of this project from the water project from Ministry of Works and Housing, Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, uh, the university community is now developing, or it's now, it's now developed. You know, we, we don't have any issue of water supply in the university now. As you can see, the, the impact of this project touched so many aspects. For example, the, waters has, the water has been linked to the university hostel, the academic environment here. You can see this is a laboratory, so a university laboratory, and the, the water is being linked here. Also, the, the, the hostel in the university where students stay, water is being linked there. The staff quarters where the, the lecturer stays, non-academic and academic staff also stays there. The water has been linked there. So with this project, the university community is now solved with the problem of water supply. I can say we are zero water problem in the university now. The water is a treated water before we, we don't have treated water. Before the water is, we can say it's contaminated because so many students encountered problems drinking the water and maybe using the water. So now our laundries, where we wash our clothes, we wash our plates, the water we cook food, is all from this uh, gigantic water project. Uh, we are going to say a big thank you to Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, most especially the Department of Special Intervention because we, we had an interview with them and the project was put into the university by the Director of Special Intervention Projects in the Ministry of Works and Housing. So we are going to say a very big thank you to the Ministry of Works and Housing because we do, with, with, uh, without the federal government, this project is not going to be possible. So we are going to say a very big thank you to both of the parties, the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing and then the federal government of Nigeria under the leadership of Mamadou Buhari's administration. Uh, we are going to say a very big thank you to each and every one of them. This have saved life, even the pure water and sometimes even bottled water that we were buying, apart from the fact that they were expensive, they were still not as hygienic enough as the water we are taking now. The water we are taking now is wonderful. Good initiative from the federal government. Tombo for the federal government. With increasing student population, rural areas with existing schools have had their resources stretched and classrooms congested, resulting in unconducive learning environments for students. For Government Girls Day Secondary School, Bodinga, Sogoto State, one of their major challenges used to be the shortage of classrooms, which resulted in them merging both science and art classes in one classroom. That situation has been changed thanks to an SDG intervention executed by the Special Project Unit of the Ministry of Works and Housing. New classroom blocks have been built in the school and the students have been provided with work chairs and tables to make learning easier. The situation we have before the, the federal government brought this block to us, we have shortage of classroom. So now the class is not congested for now. The students are taking their learning more conducive, more conducive atmosphere. On behalf of the government does this secondary school, we thank the federal government for providing us this block. We appreciate their effort. Other communities in the Northwest region that have benefited from the intervention of the SPU include Sabo Lai Kurfi in Katsina State, where a healthcare center was constructed. Shigali Dutsi Community, Katsina State, where boreholes were dug, and Dansure in Jigawa State, where power transformers were installed. In the North Central region, the team visited Tanke Lewe, a community in Kwara State, that had their roads rehabilitated and also got solar powered street lights installed in their community. This intervention has not only boosted local businesses but also increased the sense of security as indigents can now move about freely at night. It happened before now. This particular street was not motorable. And we used to suffer a lot, especially during rainy season, because of erosion. It has blocked these roads at the middle. But in recent time, I think we want to rather say we thank the federal government for what they have done for us. They have tied the roads and they have put street lights, which has boosted one, our security and the business around this area. The light comes up every evening and is very bright. On the overall, it has opened up this road. 
On the last leg of the tour, the team went to the northeast region, where they documented key projects in communities like Abare Bamaturu in Yobe State, Badaromo Genjua in Boji State, and Pantame in Gombe State. Eradicating poverty in all its forms is a core mandate of the Special Projects Unit of the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. And through the execution of various SDG projects, such as boreholes, construction of healthcare centers, rehabilitation and construction of roads and schools, installation of streetlights and power transformers, construction of housing units, among others, the Special Projects Unit has succeeded in generating employment for artisans and food vendors whilst boosting local businesses in various communities across the country. Indeed, when the president, during his speech at the inaugural June 12 Democracy Day speech, said, with leadership and a sense of purpose, we can lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years, he must have had in mind the positive multiplier effects of such projects being handled by the Special Projects Unit and several other infrastructural projects being handled by the Ministry of Works and Housing. This is the only project, construction project, this is the only one that has greater multiplier effect in terms of employment generation. Because on this site, I can tell you more than since they've started, more than 90 people, 90 people have benefited as kind of employment. Either you call it a terminal employment for almost three, four months for the duration of this project, for three months for the duration of this project, among them are food seller, among them are material, building material supplier, you can see the way they're working, you can see so many artisans and the food vendor here. So it has helped to alleviate the suffering and it has brought succor to the downtrodden in terms of poverty. It has helped them to alleviate them from the poverty level, which is the core and the target of this Hawaii administration of change, the change agenda. So the project has really helped in achieving the change agenda of the Mr. President. At least we have created employment. By the time you look at this structure as one, and you see the 90 people, look at it, now multiply it with the number of the one you have seen throughout the whole federation. But the SPU project, irrespective of where they are in those remote areas, has already brought some people and gave them gainful employment, which they will be useful to themselves. The knowledge they will learn here will be useful to themselves and useful to the community as a whole. The biggest joy and the biggest happiness I always have is to see the projects touching the lives of the common man. The big projects can continue like I always see. The government can spend money on them. But you see, as long as the lives of the common man is not affected, as long as he doesn't have water to drink, he doesn't have a classroom to take his son to, he doesn't have anything that will touch and enhance his socio-economic well-being, then we haven't done anything. I'm happy to mention that these projects have really, really impacted the lives of the common man in the communities. And the facts are there. Go around the nooks and crannies of the six geopolitical zones. They are there, and the people are making good use of them and enjoying them. And of interesting, even uh, the, the most interesting development is that right now, as I speak with you, uh, some communities have really taken over their project and said, This is our project, and nobody can take it from us. Own up what comes to you. Government projects are government project but they are your projects as tax taxpayers as citizens we must rise up to the challenge of owning and maintaining our projects at the end of the exercise the team had visited several communities in 22 states spread across the six geopolitical zones of the country they were also able to document several projects that met the eight key sustainable development goals that form part of the mandate of the Special Projects Unit of the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. And despite the current negative impact of the COVID pandemic, the hope is that some of these projects will contribute immensely to make a positive difference in the lives of ordinary Nigerians at the grassroots. Let's look at some of the bigger things. A healthcare facility. So those are places now that are easily adaptable. They have beds, they're fitted with fans, they have bed stands and all of that. If you put the staff, the manpower now, through the states and local government, they can be useful as either testing centers for people who are COVID patients or a place to collect samples. Again, we're talking about social distancing at this moment. 
there are classrooms that have been built. So these brand new schools now might be the place to act like a refill where you can move students to an over, from an overcrowded school into the new, the newly built schools and achieve social distancing. So these are some of the thoughts that come to my head at this moment, and I'm sure there will be others. Now, there are also some constituents who what they have done is not a civil engineering project, but they have procured sewing machines, skill development. Now, nothing is more important at this moment than a face mask. So those machines now can be used to roll out face masks, make face masks, in past skills, people earn income that was not available to them. All of them are useful for one thing or They're boreholes. So communities that used to walk about four kilometers to get water. I've had people say when COVID started that, oh, that there is no water in the country, but not enough of our people know what is going on across our nation. So these borehole projects are providing running water. They are now a very useful tool for uh, complying with the hand washing regulations and keeping those communities safe. So there's a lot that all of these SPU uh, projects can be deployed to uh, during and after COVID.